following on from the previous video, remember, all this is just um, revision from our section on functions. So if you don't understand it, scroll back and have a look. So if you have a function f of x equals 3x plus 2 here, um, uh, what that means is you've got a, a machine a, a machine like thing that if you put the number 2 in here, it will spit out the number 8. Um, so looking at it on, on our graph here, so this red line here, if you plot, if you get a graph plotter and plot this here, it will give you this red line here. So what that means is that if you put in the number 2 here, if you put in the number 2 here, it will spit out, a, a normal function will spit out the number 8. Now the inverse function, if you look at the inverse function, if you put in the number 8 here, it will spit out the number 2. So so our, our normal function, if you put in the number 2, it will spit out the number 8. Now the inverse function is that if you put in the number the number 8, it will spit out the number 1, 2. It will spit out uh, this this point here. So so basically, this point gets moved to over here. Now, going back to our normal function, if you put in the number 1 into here, it will spit out the number 5. It will spit out the number 5. Now the now the inverse function, so if you put in the number 5, which is here, it will spit out the number 1. So this point here gets moved to here. So the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that if you have a function, uh, whatever function, uh, if you create the inverse function, it will, be, it will automatically give rise to a reflection. Um, uh, it will give rise to a reflection along the y equals x line. Because if you think about it, Looking at the normal function, you've got two here, and then uh, and then eight. This here is eight. So you, the normal function is two eight. The inverse function is eight two. So you you're really just switching the x and the y around. If you if you look at this point here one, well if you look at this point here one five. Now the inverse is. 5, 1. So basically, you switching the x and the y around, it will automatically give rise to the reflection along the, the y equals x line. It will automatically give rise to the reflection. So no matter what function you have, the inverse function will be the reflection along the y, uh, the y, e, e, the y equals x line. Okay? Um, now, so, so take a look at, um, at y at f of x equals um, equals x squared here. So if you if you um, if you get a graph plot and plot it, it will look like this. Okay. Now the inverse function. So, so what 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 this means is how uh, at the moment you've got a function f of x equals x squared. What that means is you've got like a machine like thing where where if you put in the number two, it will spit out the number four. Now if you the thing the thing about this function here is that if you put in the number negative two, it will also spit out the number four. So here you've got a, uh, a, a, a like a many to one relationship. When you have a many to one relationship, what that means is that if you if you put in one element in here, it will spit out two. And by definition, this is not a function because um, because a function can can only spit out one machine at uh, one one one. Um, one value here you put you put in one element and then you it's spitting out two so what that means is is if you look at this uh, graph here at the moment you've got f of x equals x squared now the inverse function is always a reflection along the the y uh, the y equals x line here so if you have a if you have a graph um, uh, f of x equals x squared and then if you look at the inverse function by right it should look like this by right it should look like this Okay, but but then but then this here is not a function. The, but then we we deliberately we deliberately discard the negative version because because no, so um, normally f of x it gives you this thing here. The inverse function is always re a reflection along along the y uh, the y equals x line. So so the inverse function will will, will will the inverse will look like this. But then this here is not a function because. If you draw a vertical line here, if you put if you put the number four, uh, hang on, if if you put the number four in here, it will spit out two values here. So what that means is, if you um, if you look at the number four here, it will give you positive two and negative two. This here is not a function. So we deliberately we deliberately um, uh, discard the negative version, the negative version, in order for us to create 
a function in order for us to call call this a function. And the reason why we cast it into a function is that we have so many theorems um, on functions that if we cast it into uh, into a function, we can we can start using our theorems. You see, if you keep the inverse to be like this. Then, then, then you, then we cannot apply all all the theorems that we developed on functions. That's why we deliberately discard the negative version. You, you could, by the way, discard the positive version and only look at the negative one. This here is a function. Um, by you doing this here, you can start to apply all the all the theorems that we developed for, for functions. So remember, um, uh, y well, f of x equals x squared gives you this. By right, the inverse would be should be like this, but then we deliberately cast this into a function by discarding this. And the reason why we cast into a function is because we we have so many theorems on functions. We want to be able to apply uh, our theorems on, onto this line here. Okay, bear that in mind. Okay.